Today is an auspicious occasion. The reopening of the new, and I say new, Ancillary Wellness Center. This is the culmination of a nine-year process in response to an increasing resource gap between health needs and population expectations. And it was inspired by the need to sustain goals and protect the poor and vulnerable as part of the health reform pro agenda. Sorry. It is expected that this enhancement, this new renewed facility, will better cater to the needs of both clients and staff in the village of ancillary and environs. I am humbly honored to deliver welcome remarks for this momentous occasion. Today, we celebrate the strides and unforgettable efforts of all stakeholders in the fashioning and finalizing of this modern, well thought of, client-focused health facility. The amenities place will facilitate efficiency and productivity aligned with the way forward to quality assurance standards. Many years ago, the previous ancillary wellness center served the residents and neighboring St. Lucians and tourists alike. It was a loved building that symbolized health, counseling, security, and trust for all those who accessed care. It was an extension of home for many. The decommissioning of the building sadly came to an end when it was declared unsatisfactory for further delivery of healthcare services. In 2014, the ancillary health team and allied services facilitated a move, a smooth transition into a rental property outside the village for continued health services. The provision of care at this location was well received by the clients. However, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, as it was of the official name at this time, saw it fitting to construct a facility that belonged to the community. Although many thought, due to the insult of the forces of nature, this space where we now stand was not ideal for this vision to become a reality. This vision was supported by the words of Barack Obama, written in 2012. I have always believed that hope is that stubborn thing inside of us that insists that despite all evidence to the contrary, something better awaits. Today, we are proud that the previous outdated, unacceptable structure has transformed to a facility we are all proud of. I can sense the appreciation from the healthcare providers, the recipients of the services, and the pride of those hands who labored tirelessly to construct this spacious COVID-19 compatible building. Once again, I am pleased to welcome our ministers of cabinet, officials from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, distinguished guests, staff and residents to our long-awaited reopening of the Ancillary Wellness Center. Pumun kie me kweyol, kika kokopon keyol, ek kuf kie me mingle kionalet, mwe di konsa, merci kon vinisi a hori a celebre ek nou, kon nou vie ouve Ancillary by mamay Ancillary. Bon jene, bienveni. The Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs is pleased today to conduct the official opening of our new and modern Ancillary Wellness Center. This newly constructed and smart wellness center symbolizes the modernization of the health delivery infrastructure in a manner that will be reflected in improved capacity to deliver quality health service within Region 7 and with broader implications for universal health coverage in St. Lucia. The Ancillary Wellness Center is the latest addition to the stock of wellness centers designed to deliver the first and what some would say is the most important stage in healthcare, and that is primary healthcare. The construction of this facility represents the bold decision taken by the Ministry of Health to improve health services through modernization and expansion of health service delivery 
in primary healthcare services. This new ancillary wellness center represents the realization of a nine-year vision and process which began with an approval for the Ministry of Health to enter a build-to-own lease transfer agreement or bolt agreement with the National Insurance Property Development and Management Company Limited, NIPRO, to construct and equip the Ancillary Wellness Center by way of a cabinet conclusion number 403 of 2012. In April 19, 2016, NIMPRO approved a preliminary construction estimate after the brief, design brief for the Ancillary Wellness Center was submitted by the Ministry of Health. Following this process, site enabling works were implemented in September 2018. The project was implemented in two phases, with phase one encompassing the site enabling works, including demolition, and phase two, which facilitated, con facilitated construction activities on site. The construction phase commenced in October 2019 and ended in August 2021, spanning a period of 23 months. It must be noted that the construction phase was impacted by COVID-19 with the shutdowns, new protocols which limited the number of workers on site, and supply chain challenges for materials. This project came in at a cost of approximately 11.7 million Eastern Caribbean dollars and is actually the first bolt agreement that the Ministry of Health has entered into with NIPRO. The District of Ancillary is located within Region 7, Health Region 7, which also includes the communities of Caldisac, Lacqua, through to Ancillary Village. There are four health facilities within Region 7, of which the, the new Ancillary Wellness Center is now the premier facility for health service delivery in primary care. The new center boasts an expansion in de dental services accommodation for health promotion and preventative programs, and environmental health office space. The services at the Ancillary Wellness Center are currently rendered by one nurse, two nurse aides, one domestic assistant who are stationed at the Wellness Center. And additionally, the center accommodates visits from clinical staff who provide, other clinical staff who provide services to the facility in a scheduled manner. Given the foregoing, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is therefore pleased and proud to deliver to the village of Ancillary and the entire Region 7 this new facility with the hope that you embrace it and cherish it. And at the same time, the Ministry continues to pledge its commitment to providing quality health care as part of a procession towards universal health coverage in St. Lucia. I thank you. This has been a long journey, initiated on an afternoon no different from this. The idea to engage the National Health Insurance Corporation grew out of the recognition of that the, bold, the build own lease transfer of Bolt experience with the police and fire stations were seemingly positive initiatives and as such was seen as a best practice. Consequently, on that given day, a letter requesting such an engagement was drafted, signed, and sent off to the Minister of Finance for his consideration. Although it had been given positive consideration, there were still hurdles before we could have commenced, and this was only the administrative phase before we could have moved on what we believe would have been an excellent initiative it would have to get the stamp of approval from the NIPRO investment committee after they concluded their deliberations that the committee that is it would seem that they were like that we were like-minded on this initiative and the approval would shortly be forwarded to the parties to proceed. Alas, we had all of the approvals 
and we were clear to commence the first meetings, with, which resulted in the move to complete the first of many drafts of the design briefs that would have formed this structure that we see here today. However, it would take 15 years, four ministers, six PSs, three health planners, three chief health planners, two CMOs, four PNOs, and the many others who contributed to the final product. Without this dedication of the Ministry of Health, this would not have been a reality. Moreover, it was the open relationship with NIC that was the greatest outcome. We presented to them and they listened. With all of the recommendations, there was a final product. It was met, it met all of our power standards. And as such, it had to be safe, it had to be green, which made it smart in our books. That meant this facility, one of our most modern revisions, would have the following features new water harvesting systems, generator capacity to support operations in times of emergency, hurricane standards for roofing, windows, shutters, a fire system to support the facility, internal communication systems so that we could reach out and touch our clients, and disability access. Again, this has been a long road. But we are finally here. And we, both the Ministry of Health and the community of Ancillary, are better off for it. Thank you.
On behalf of the National Insurance Property Development and Management Company Limited and our parent company, the National Insurance Corporation, I have the pleasure this afternoon of participating in this official reopening of the Ancillary Wellness Center in this modern purpose-built facility, which will assist the Ministry of Health in enhancing the services offered to the residents of Ancillary and its environs. If I were to sum up this project, I would use the saying, the best things in life are worth waiting for, fighting for, believing in, and just never letting go of. This, I truly believe, epitomizes this project. As previously mentioned, this project initiated some 16 odd years ago, went through many variations and alternative sites before finally returning to the original site of the Ancillary Health Center on which we are congregated today. At NIPRO, we are pleased to have once again collaborated with the government of St. Lucia in financing and constructing this needed facility under Build, Operate, Lease and Transfer Arrangement, otherwise known as a BOLD for short, with financing provided by our parent company, the National Insurance Corporation. Whilst this facility is the first health facility constructed by us, it joins a family of 13 other purpose-built police and fire stations around our beautiful island of St. Lucia, built by NIPRO over the last 22 years under similar financing arrangements. Having been built as a bold project, the Ministry of Health can rest assured that the maintenance needs shall be handled by us at NIPRO for at least the next 15 years when the ownership of this facility will be officially transferred to the government of St. Lucia. Given that this is the first of its kind constructed by NIPRO, as mentioned again previously, we have endeavored to particularly attend to the needs of its end users whilst incorporating lessons learned throughout our history of construction and maintenance. I would like to correct the acting PS, and I think it, it'll be a pleasant surprise. Constructed at an overall project cost of approximately nine million because we were able to bring this in under budget. This project, this facility measures approximately 7,630 square feet of total floor space comprising 5,159 on the ground floor and 2,470 square feet on the first. The reconstructed Ancillary Wellness Center has been built to withstand the ravages of adverse weather systems through the erection of concrete cast roofs and hurricane shutters. The entire site, inclusive of the access road to the front, has been raised 1.9 meters above the pre-existing grade levels. This was to prevent the flooding, which seasonally would have affected the previously existing station, facility, sorry. <laughs> this engineering feat, I should say, was recently tested earlier this year during the heavy rains that flooded the adjoining courts but left this facility untouched. So we are fairly confident that our work has been accomplished. Additionally, the center is equipped with a rainwater harvesting system, solar water heaters, a sewer treatment plant, and a standby generator to, keep, to cater for its power generating needs. Further amenities include on the ground floor here, ambulance pickup, male and female washrooms, two consultation rooms with ensuite bathroom washrooms, a dental office with two dental chairs, a general waiting area in which we are gathered, a treatment and injections unit, a treatment and dressings area, a nurses station, triage and records unit, a pharmacy, demonstration kitchen, which I'm sure will be put to other good uses, male and female public washroom, sterilization room, and a laundry facility. The first floor comprises a meeting slash conference room, male and female washrooms, two shared consultation rooms, a staff lounge, staff washrooms with showers, male and female changing rooms, and our pump room to service all that's required. This reconstructed Ancillary Wellness Center was designed by Inter-Island Architects and Planners Limited with consultancy services provided by Thibbles Consulting, the structural engineers, 
and J.C. Francis and Associates, the MEP engineers. The overall project, as mentioned, was constructed in two phases, comprising demolition of the then existing old health center structure and then the construction of the physical facility. Demolition and hoarding was conducted by heavy equipment rentals and was carried out in September 2018 over a period of approximately two weeks. The general contractor, Rennes Construction Company Limited, commenced construction in 2019 and the facility was completed approximately 22 months later in August 2021 with a final construction cost of approximately $6 million. His efforts, as you would have heard previously, were negatively affected by the island-wide shutdowns and ensuing health and social distancing protocols implemented to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Additionally, this was, he was also impacted by significant delays in the various supply chains globally brought about by the pandemic. At this time, I would also like to take the opportunity to publicly thank the project team, as previously mentioned, and the NIPRO team, led by our project manager, Ms. Paula Watson Popo, who worked tire tirelessly to ensure the production of a quality product as revealed today. NIPRO is truly appreciative of the opportunity to work with the government of St. Lucia in providing facilities that not only accommodate police and fire personnel, but now our health providers as well. We trust that our efforts in this facility shall assist the doctors, nurses, and other health practitioners in their continued efforts at improving the services to communities such like Ancillary and beyond. Without being boastful, I am certain that your new accommodations shall be the envy of your colleagues, and you may well experience visits by patients from further afield than normal once the word gets out. As evidence today, we at NIBRO shall constantly strive to provide modern, safe, comfortable, and environmentally friendly accommodation to our clients in the most cost-effective manner. In closing, I wish to thank the government of St. Lucia for the opportunity afforded us and look forward to further collaboration on future projects. To the doctors and nurses, I welcome you back to your new home and let me assure you that we shall only be a call away to assist in maintaining your ancillary wellness center. Thank you. This brand new wellness center is a cause for celebration for the community. The true significance of today's opening ceremony extends beyond the walls of this facility. It represents a new era in delivering high quality and inclusive healthcare services to the residents of the District of Ansari and its environs. Ladies and gentlemen, delivering high quality and inclusive healthcare is a priority of this government. And for me, as your parliamentary representative, my primary goal is to safeguard our people, our livelihoods, and our future. As such, providing access to quality healthcare services is a community, is a priority to this community. This is an important and joyous occasion for the members of the community who have been waiting tirelessly for this wellness center. I am convinced that the impact of this wellness center will have on the lives of the community of Ansari and its environment and its environs. The Ansari Wellness Center is really an investment in the people of this community, in our wellness, in our potential, in our dreams and aspirations, in our hopes and ambitions. This wellness center is for you and your children. Indeed, what we are celebrating today is not just this building, but the services this building will provide to the community it serves how the Wellness Center will provide access to quality health care at this community so desperately needs. And very importantly, as a government, we need to comply with our duty to give health care workers safe working conditions. The COVID-19 pandemic has reminded us of the vital role health care workers play to relieve suffering and save lives. Therefore, we must have adequate working conditions in which to deliver high quality services that the population demands of them. It is no secret that the ancillary is beset with many social and economic challenges, such as the burden of high unemployment, crime and violence, alcohol and drug abuse, neglect of the sick and the elderly. We agree 
that this is a situation that must be arrested for our own well-being as citizens of this country. Government alone will not be able to respond adequately to these enormous challenges that our communities are confronted with. But by working together, we will be able to conquer the ills and deficiencies of our society. We, each and every one of us in this government, are committed to this cause. Now I know we have many talented and gifted artists in this community. However, residents of Ansari, I implore you to be your brother's keeper. Today, this is a brand new facility, a model facility that contributes to the community's asset base. We do not want to see it being defaced with unsolicited artwork or graffiti. We want you to own the facility, take pride in it, so that you can access with ease and services provided. Moreover, I also want to assure the management of the Ministry of Health and NIPRO, this facility will remain in very capable hands. In closing, I'd like to recognize and applaud the institutions and the hardworking personnel who are connected with this project. This is an impressive facility, and it would be remiss of me not to recognize them. As we formally open the Ansari Wellness Center, we honor the spirit of a resilient people whose unwavering commitment to this project has led us to today's opening ceremony. I now have the honor to declare the Ansari Wellness Facility officially open as a dedication to the people of my constituency. I thank you. It is indeed um, a privilege to be able to respond on behalf of the community as a community person myself and to say what a wonderful opportunity and privilege it is to see this day come to a reality. Ancillary is well known for some very good things. We, have, we know it, it's a place of tremendous natural beauty and also it's a place of tremendous creativity and talent as we saw on display earlier. But I think it is also well known Honorable Henry, you would, you would know very well from your previous life, that it is also well known as a place synonymous with poverty and also vulnerability. Now, in, there have been some previous, at least in my lifetime, some previous policy interventions, government interventions, that I think have made some tremendous impact on those two things. And I'm mentioning them because there is also a link with this, this project today, which have impacted both the vulnerability and the poverty. One being the relocation project at Otabo. That was an impactful government policy intervention that has impacted me personally and many others, affecting both the, 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 the vulnerability to flooding and raising the standard of living. The second I want to mention is the flood mitigation project, just next door with the bridge, which has also significantly reduced flooding in the community and affected the quality of life because as um, Shamiri would know and others would know, it is one thing to go to bed at night and when you hear tingling on the galvanized, you cannot sleep because you don't know whether you'll be waking up in a pool of water. So that has significantly relieved the community members. And in that same category, I would like to place this intervention, significant in dealing both with the poverty and the vulnerability reduction. Um, in fact, poverty, to address poverty, you need to address people's quality of life access to quality service. And this has definitely done that for us as ancillary persons. Also, if you remember those who are my age and more, um, 1994, 1996, Tropical Storm Debbie and the storm that came after in 96, we were navigating the waters and this previous building was en glow. Imagine you have a disaster and your healthcare facility is not available to treat the people. 
I want to applaud the design. I want to applaud the construction, which has really addressed this, this flooding risk. And when we have the next set of rains or storms, we are confident that we will continue to have access to emergency response and health care response. So I want to say thanks again. Thanks again to all who have been involved. And we look forward to partnering with you as community members to upkeep this, this facility and to ensure it is viable for generations to come. beautiful place. If you look outside, you see the hills. It's as if the houses, some of them with the rusty galvanized, scratching the side of the hills to expose the rocks. It is really a beautiful place. We are surrounded by the sea. The sea embraces us. And we are in the middle of a place where water is everywhere sometimes. We really have a beautiful place, a beautiful building, sitting almost atop a little hill overlooking the plain field. It's almost as if this building was placed here to say deliberately that you are safe. You are safe. You can play and you can watch the hills. I want to place on record the appreciation of the government of St. Lucia and that of the Ministry of Health for all of the hard work of the nurses in this region over the years in the old facility. Thanks to all who worked on the project since the time of its inception. And speakers before me have listed the many different 
professionals. Mr. Calix did a wonderful job of mentioning whether it be policymakers, ministers, permanent secretaries, and so on. All who played some part, whether at the policy level or on the ground, to cause this project to be a reality today. The appreciation to NIPRO and the professionalism, the construction team, and all who worked hard over the years. Thanks to the workers, the ancillary staff, the janitors, the watchmen, everyone who worked hard. Dr. Andre Edward and his team. Thanks to the medical professionals. But what must happen here? And so we have a wonderful facility. I taught the facility a few weeks ago and thoroughly enjoyed the results of that work which I just spoke about. The high quality of what we have and the excellent presentations, the finishing and everything. But what must we do here with this wonderful facility? Of course, we need to continue to provide quality service. We are known for quality service. We know that our nurses provide quality care. We need to continue to do that. We need to continue to be a good example and a leader, not only in Region 7, not just in St. Lucia, but throughout the, the Caribbean region. We believe in putting people first, and therefore I urge everyone to continue to put people first, continue to put the people of not just Ansari Canaries and this region, but the people of St. Lucia first. Someone said, I think it was Ms. Jabatis who said, that you may have people coming from all over St. Lucia to flood this facility. But if you give excellent service, this is exactly what will happen. I want to say to you also, as I've said to many of our staff since I became minister, that you are not just a nurse working to collect your pension or a doctor waiting to get to that age or a permanent secretary or head of department waiting to get to that age. You can be a beacon of hope, not only for ancillary canneries, but for the world. Too many people believe that because we are from St. Lucia, we are simply nurses and doctors in St. Lucia or janitors in a health center. I want you to turn this place into a, sec a center of excellence, a center of innovation. And I told the nurse the last time I visited, why don't we develop specific protocols, do the studies, and create a center which will have the best treatment for snake bites? Why don't we think of things like that? We can do that. This should not just be another ancillary, another wellness center in St. Lucia with nice walls and beautiful nurses and doctors and hardworking people. This should be a center of excellence so that people in St. Lucia, people from all over the world, know that if they come to a tiny island called St. Lucia and a little quaint village called Ancillary, there is a protocol in that place that, has, that is dealing with fairly last better than anywhere else in the world. And who knows? You may develop some level of excellence at Ansterry that might replace bananas and green gold and so on. Who knows? I want you to dream. I want you to dream big. So we develop excellent facilities all around the country. And we go into these facilities as professionals. And we leave them when they deteriorate and so on. But we need to develop excellence. We need to develop protocols that, that can be tested all around the world and we can be known for it, just like Sir Arthur Lewis did and just like Derek Walcott did. So for me, this is not just a health center. This is a center of excellence. So you have to be known as the, the best nurses. And I have given you an example. Because you are known for that. You are known for snakes. Fairly last and, and so on. But you, you may not know that this is a precious resource that we have in St. Lucia. 
And the venom of that snake is precious. So I'm just teasing you to tell you how far you can go. So take this facility, take care of it, but also develop a center of excellence here. I will not be doing justice to myself. Some of the ladies say, I want to thank everyone who is in the wellness center. I want to thank everyone who has been in the government, 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 the Anoldi, nous avons travaillé avec ça. Différents un changement, avec un présent, nous n'y en a pas. Si gros glow vini, maintenant un gros glow est passé, et qui n'est pas affecté ici. Et ça, c'est un gros problème pour Jean Laslaoui. Et je me dis, c'est une bonne occasion pour nous développer des choses spéciales. Parce que, en Saint-Lucie, nous faisons un gros building avec nos docteurs, 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 nos quand nous avons développé un bagage, pièce côté à la terre à Pani. Avec pour nous-mêmes, ça va un bagage ça là. Fait bien pour nous nous-mêmes, avec faire non pour qu'on nous. Avec moi, par exemple, faire des lances à chaque monde, paye un serpent. Mais à même l'occasion ça là, mais nous en la cela oui. Avec nous ni à l'occasion pour développer ici à peut-être quoi en place qu'on a ni plus mais nos qui a traité ce cas de bagage ça là. Avec toute la terre, qui garde nous pour ça. Avec moi, ça, Adam Moun peut-être qu'a dit, il s'en a peut-être moi. Mais c'est comme ça que je vais faire. Nous, 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 plus, nous, plus gros passé, côté nous, qui avons à Bouizan. Nous, c'est un monde qui gouan, nous, ni gouan, nous, ni en chai, zèl. C'est Afal Louis Moutier nous ça, avec Derek Walcott Moutier nous ça. Et nous sommes des docteurs qui nous ont fait des choses. C'est Janitor, tout ce monde à Victoria, à l'hôpital. C'est des gens qui ont fait des Covid qui nous ont fait. Nous sommes des gens qui ont fait des choses. Nous sommes des gens qui ont fait des choses. Je remercie tout le monde. Et je remercie tout le monde. Before I take my seat, I wish at this time once again to thank the doctors, the nurses, the, the janitors, the porters, all those who have been fighting COVID-19. I wish to thank St. Lucians for adhering to the protocols even better now. The CMO and her team, the nurses, um, everyone. I wish to thank Prime Minister and the Cabinet colleagues for working along with the, the medical professionals and the firemen, police, everyone, to kind of keep COVID at bay for now. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, but at least for now. I wish to encourage you, and I thank you. And may God bless you. May God bless this center. And let us do great things here. Merci à Chai.
pleasure to be at this ceremony today to witness the actual opening of the Ansari Wellness Center. I have been in government for a long time. I know both sides of the coin, government and opposition. And I also know that a wellness center was always spoken about for Ansari. I know the discussion and the debates that the parliamentary, former parliamentary representative Cyprian Lansico had over this health center in Ansari. I also know about the complaints from the nurses and the doctors who came here about conditions in the health center in Ansari. And I also know that it was always the intention of the government to construct a health center or wellness center in Ansari. So it gives me a particular type of pleasure to be here this afternoon. And pleasure from the point that this facility really got off stream in May 2016. But in, but in our business, the people decide. And in June 2016, the people decided. And what the people decided was that they would change the government. And we accepted, and the government changed. And five years later, we are back here to open a facility that we already started in 2016. <laughs> and this is a significant point, because there is a feeling that when governments change, projects must stop with them. I have made it abundantly clear that the government that I have the honor and the, to lead will not, will not stop projects even though we did not start it. Once the project will benefit the community, once it will benefit the people, once it meets the objectives of putting people first, we are going to continue it. So I, also, I want to inform the people of Ansari here that very shortly we are going to put in out the tender for the second lot of the Millennium Highway, which will be from Cul-de-Sac to Ansari. So hopefully by the end of next year we should see work on the second lot, which is the continuation of the Millennium Highway. Ancillary needs, and it, sometimes it irks me when I hear people speak about poverty in Ansari. Ansari may be poor in some aspects in terms of infrastructure, but the richness of the people, the talent of the people, the perseverance of the people, and the pride and dignity of the people, that cannot be poverty. What we need, what we need is to inspire these people. And my colleague, the Minister of Health, made a good point. This building, is, this building structurally is wonderful. The quality of work done by St. Lucian's. I, I looked at the floor. World class, global class. St. Lucia has that kind of class. We have that kind of capability. But what we need is we need to have pride in ourselves. We need to have pride in our people, I mean, to have confidence in our people. So the minister is right when he speaks of making this place 
ascent of excellence. We have to see if we can do the best that we can. And this week I visited the OKE hospital and the respiratory hospital. And it, I, it, I was touched by the quality of service and the dedication of most of the staff who work in these areas. But you must tell your story. Because many times all we hear is when something goes wrong. All we hear is when somebody comes to the hospital and doesn't get proper service. All we hear is when, some, when there's a mishap in the hospital. But there are good stories. And the level of excellence of the medical staff in this country must be applauded. And I want to officially again thank them for the work that they put every day. But you must tell your story and you must communicate. We, we have a, dispos a disposition in St. Lucia. When you say what you can do, how you do it, people call you arrogant. Speaking the truth is not arrogance. Speaking the truth is the truth. And if we, in spite of the conditions, the limited conditions that we work on, in spite of the shortness of money, the shortness of finance, even the equipment that we have, if we can do what we do for health in St. Lucia, we need to talk about it and let people know that we are trying our best under the circumstances. So it is a time when healthcare is at the forefront of, of the government's mind. But whilst I visit a facility, I want to tell you that there are NCDs, non-communicable diseases, that we can avoid. And I know that they say, this place is so beautiful, people want to come here very often. But I think we should try to avoid coming sometimes for things we can avoid, so things we can do without. And this is why we must, and we must, and it was said in song, we must deal with our local food, our local fruits, our fish, etc. Diet and exercise to avoid some of the M NCDs that are so prevalent in St. Lucia. So we need to have a good mix, a good facility, well-run, quality nurses, quality doctors, and again, we must pay tribute to the government and people of Cuba for causing us to have the cadre of doctors that we have in this country. We forget sometimes, we forget the contribution of the Cuban government as far as our health care is concerned. So I'm very pleased to be here. I'm extremely pleased to be here. I'm extremely pleased to tell you that I lead a government that will continue to put you first. We'll continue to put the people first. And as we battle COVID, and I know that we, in the season where people want to relax and people want to free up and people want to go to their parties and do their stuff, just make a little, more, a little sacrifice just for a few more days, just for a few more months. We do not know what the future will hold as far as COVID is concerned. We have no idea what the future will hold as far as COVID is concerned. But what we know is if we follow what the little children said, be wise, sanitize, join the band, wash your hand, it's no big stars to wear a mask, excuse me, please cover your sneeze. If you, it's me, it's us, who must defeat the virus? Don't take a silly chance, keep a little distance, embrace the vaccination, it's for your own protection. If we all follow that, we'll have this pandemic under control at some point in time. So we need to make just like a sacrifice. And I do not, and this is why we change the policy as it relates to the control of COVID. Because we do not want, we don't want people to believe that if they catch COVID, they have committed a crime. You don't go to the streets and catch it. You, you get it everywhere, not something you look for. There are certain things that, that we look for. But you do not go out and say, I'm going to catch COVID. But if we can follow these simple steps, this is why we changed the policy as it related to COVID. We said you cannot arrest someone, you cannot hold him by his locks if he's a raster, you cannot drag him because he doesn't wear a mask. You have to say to him, you wear a mask for your own safety and for the safety of the people around you. We thought it was necessary to educate them. 
And I can say for now, and with, the, and with this business, we will never say that we, we've been successful. We will never say you can argue with success. What we will say is because of the work of the chief medical officer, I see the, miss, the lady, the nurse Shabbat is here, the vaccination people, and the staff of the Ministry of Health, we, for now, seem to be getting it under control. But we cannot be complacent. We must not be complacent. And I want to apologize for you, because people, every day, they meet me and say to me, when are we able to do good to our, our, our normal lives? And they always say, like somebody put on Instagram last night, P.I. free it up. <laughs> Free up, free up, Pierre, free it up, free it up. You understand? My sister, I want to free it up, you know. But I don't want to free it up and you end up as some prophets of doom and gloom have predicted that we have bodies who call that kind of a space in hospitals in St. Lucia. We want to avoid that. So I want to thank you. I want to thank the people of St. Lucia for understanding. Because the majority of people in St. Lucia comply with the regulations. It's just a few. It's just a few who break the law and a few don't understand that it is for their own protection and for their own well-being. Own well -being. So, Ansari is a very exciting place. My colleague, the Minister of Health, described it adequately. Ansari is a place of excitement. If you are a politician and you speak in Ansari and you survive, you're doing well. <laughs> You're doing very well. It's the most, it's the most, it's a country where people have the most opinions. They opinionated and they stand for something and they stand for it. We have to convert that into excellence. We have to convert that in song. We have to convert that to the talent that comes from the Calypsonians that come out of Ansari. I can never forget. One day woke up by me a shoe. One day woke up by me a, a pants. From Ansari, who black, the talent, the, the cricketers, the footballers that come from Ansari, the passion. When I went to school a very, very long time ago, and you, you came to play cricket in Ansari, you have to be sure that you lose. <laughs> You have to be sure that you lose. <laughs> so, so, you, so, so you try your best to lose so you can go home in peace and quiet. <laughs> that is the passion of the people of Ansari. So I want you to take care of this building. I want you to treat this building as your own. I want to thank Nipro and to tell Mr. Arnold that I'll be knocking on his door very, very soon. Because we need to make NIPRO and the NIC work for us, work with us. We need to do it. And I have to thank NIPRO. And the point, he, the point on maintenance is extremely important. We have to ensure that we maintain our buildings. We have to maintain them. You cannot build them and leave them. We have to maintain them. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to see that this building remains in this pristine condition. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to the doctors and nurses, and do have a very good week.
Uh, as your living quarters and you had the medical quarters. No, no. Staff chain general, male section. Typically, we don't have space to put everything. So you come, you come up here and you can your bag. Exactly. You move to the wall. Parliamentary, where's the parliamentary? I'm sorry, it's the footballer, 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 it's the footballer,